Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, Urban Rural Partnership Workshop session on managing the metropolitan landscape in Europe, a collaboration between uh, the IKM and the Metrics Network for German metropolitan regions and Metrics in the Network for European metropolitan regions and areas. And of course, welcome to our very esteemed members who will present today. The theme of the workshop links to our metrics expert group named Metropolitan Landscapes, Balancing the Urban and Rural. And I think the balancing is an important word in that title. Given that a single city or a small regional entity is less and less able to cope alone with today's complex social, economic and environmental challenges, multi-level cooperation is essential. The rural areas surrounding the metropole are just, an, just as important for the health of the metropolitan region's economy as the urban cores. The region's identity, image and quality of urban life can be defined by its surrounding metropolitan landscape. Urban-rural relations and partnerships play an increasingly important role for the governance of European metropolitan regions. Further impulses and European initiatives to balance urban and rural areas are expected from the upcoming updates of the Leipzig Charter 2.0 and the EU Territorial Agenda. This metrics uh, workshop, metrics IKM workshop, will focus on the international exchange on policy fields, governance, instruments of rural, urban rural cooperation in metropolitan areas. We will focus on the how. We will see two sets of presentations, one from the German metropolitan regions introduced by Jakob Richter, uh, the MD of Hamburg Metropolitan Regions, and this will be followed by reviews from three other European regions that I will introduce later. Unfortunately, our Finnish partner has taken unwell and cannot join. And we will finish with questions and answers and also collect ideas for our uh, metrics expert group. My name is Henk Bauman. I am the Secretary General of Metrics, the uh, network that is uh, supporting this conference, and I hope you will join, uh, enjoy this, uh, this session. I would like to pass the word to uh, Jakob Richter, who is here as well, to introduce the presentations. Is Jakob there? Do you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I yeah, now you. you hear me. Uh, okay, I don't know what it was. was. I I tapped on uh, the bottom at least 10 times. Perhaps it was too much. Okay, thank you, Harry. Uh, much for Hank for a uh, welcome for words. It's really wonderful to have a, a Metrix and IKM uh, workshop together. Uh, IKM is the association of the uh, German metropolitan regions. Perhaps I say a few words of the German metropolitan regions about the German metropolitan regions because I guess that not everybody who is hearing and seeing us now is so familiar with what the German metropolitan regions are and what we are doing, especially uh, our international guests. Um, metropolitan regions in Germany are organized at least since 25 years. Um, at the moment, there are officially uh, 11 metropolitan regions in uh, Germany. In fact, we are 12. One is uh, in, uh, divided in two parts, which is uh, the Ruhr and uh, Cologne and uh, Düsseldorf, the Rhineland. Um, in these regions, um, cities and towns and rural areas are working closely together and successfully. Um, and we really are facing the um, international competition together, which is one of our main goals. Um, from our point of view, metropolitan regions um, really fulfill an important function. Um, they are, of course, important transport hubs, economic centers um, at global and European level. Um, they are, of course, innovative and educational centers. In short, they are motors for social, economic, cultural and environmental development. And this is why we are joining together, why we are joining together in the IKM. Um, for us, it is absolutely clear that the modern world does not always correspond to historical administrative boundaries. So 
metropolitan regions in Germany um, are crossing the, those uh, administrative boundaries, whether it is on a city or on a county level. Um, and in Germany, um, it's also on a lender level or because we are federal organized. And so we are crossing uh, also the lender border, borders, which is um, quite important in Germany because uh, the lender by themselves have uh, law giving capabilities, which is quite different than in most uh, European countries. In comparison to uh, other established European metropolitan regions, the German ones are quite large. Some German metropolitan regions have a radius of 100 kilometers around the core city. For example, Hamburg, the one I'm head of the office. Um, so they really, really reach out in the rural areas. And we will hear of that, of course, in the four presentations of the German metropolitan regions. And they are crossing in between the peri-rural, or sort of, should I say peri-urban, of course, areas. And of course, they are also have the uh, core cities or the core metropol metropolises um, in them. So what we really believe and what we see every day in our work is that urban and rural areas are really dependent upon each other. Because we are not here in Leipzig, but we should have been here in Leipzig, I would say a little bit um, about the upcoming new Leipzig Charta. Um, this is, of course, a very important thing, and we think we strongly um, support the Leipzig Charta, but we also think that it could be a little bit more focused on the question of rural and urban working together and making both sides stronger. Of course, we know that cities and towns are most important for the development of Europe, but this aspect of working together, rural and urban, perhaps could come a little bit more up in the European policies. Um, what we want to show you here now is with four projects, how this working together of urban, peri-urban and rural areas is working in four different German metropolitan areas. And we hope that after that, we can reflect on this by our international partners from Metrex. So it will be a really interesting discussions afterwards. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say. Perhaps we can have the uh, slide of the first presentation, which I'm happy to introduce. It's Anna Dunkel from the metropolitan region of central Germany. Germany is the metropolitan region around Leipzig. Um, it's called Interco2, Integrated Housing Development Concepts in the Metropolitan Growth Areas. Um, as you know, and as in many other metropolitan centers, the population growth in Leipzig and the Halle-Saale area is big or is growing, the population is growing. This, of course, is leading to a shortage of inexpensive living states in both centers, and it increases the settlement pressure on the surrounding areas. And this is a problem as far as I have understand what um, Anna Dunkel is yeah, showing us here, how they handle this in the metropolitan region of Ch central Germany. And uh, I've read that you are also approaching this issue by developing a practical monitoring system about housing space, which sounds to me, uh, very, um, yeah, very good, and which is really uh, very interesting to hear about. Um, Mrs. Dunkel, the player, the uh, floor is open for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jakob Richter. Um, I'm very happy to introduce you to the region we are located in right now, at least virtually, to the Leipzig Halle region. So, yeah, as mentioned before, my name is Anna Dunkel. I'm from the Leibniz Institute for Regional Geography in Leipzig. And here we are together with Dr. Annette Bergfeld and other important partners are working on this project called Interco2. Uh, on the next, yes, thank you slide. We can see the topographical setting. So we are looking at central Germany, especially at this geographic, this like demographically a bit divided region. We have Leipzig, which is often mentioned as one of the most and fastest growing German cities after 70 years of decline, but we also have Halle, 
which is now in a phase of moderate growth. And we have severely um, contested cities and towns between these two cities and around Leipzig, basically. But also we do have shrinking and severe shrinking, especially at the edge of this research area. And from 2021, we are going to implement our housing concept, not only in this area, but we are also going to test it in a new area, the Jena and Saale Holstein County, to see whether we can take our results further to the next area. The next slide, please. Yeah, because of this new but really partial population growth, there is a high sense of competition between the cities and towns, I have to say. So which is really seen in the housing development. So there is a, there's a lot of building of single family housing on the base of a felt need for this. So we are working on a monitoring system to make this development more sustainable because we think that it might not be really fitting to the age structure of the of the future here and also in a sense of land use management, it's not really sustainable what's happening with this single family housing. So with this monitoring system, we want to show the municipalities themselves what's actually happening in terms of demographic and economic and housing and also in the future, but also very important to show what's happening in the surrounding municipalities because it was often like hidden from each other what's happening in the region and also what's happening across the borders of the counties and the federal state. Another approach we have is the preferred housing development areas. And for that, um, first of all, we want to identify local centers which have access to infrastructure of daily life. This is, this is the map on the left you can see. And also um, local centers which have a good access to public transportation from which people can reach the bigger cities within like half an hour in a convenient way, like without changing the bus and the train like 15 times, but yeah, where you can really reach the uh, urban course and the fast and convenient. And the next step is together with our partner project, Stadtland Navi. They are also funded from the uh, Stadtland Plus uh, initiative to see whether in these local centers there's actual housing development potential. So we check whether there are planning restrictions or env environmental restrictions. And another approach is, is that we're thinking in um, scenarios for the future development. And from that, we want to derive future needs. So in this region showed that past population forecasts were really not, not really functioning in that way and that some minor changes, like for example, the migration can really change the development. And that, that's why it's more important to, to think in a range and to adapt to these to these minor changes in population development. On the last slide, our approach of how we implement this, we are a very practice oriented project. We have in every city or county at least associated partners. So we're working together with the city of Leipzig, the, the county of Leipzig and the Uni Jena. We are also really working closely together with the regional planning association. And our clear goal is that our recommendations for housing development will lead into the, the, the actual um, regional planning at some point, so the um, formal planning. And um, very important is also the last point is that we activate the local knowledge. So we want to hear the inhabitants perspective. We interviewed or we conducted survey in six towns and cities, and we were happy to receive 4,000 responses about housing needs and wishes and mobility patterns. And um, we just started to analyze the results. The city of Leipzig is lead partner in this, in this uh, part of our project, but it already shows that the notion that single family housing is the driver of the region is not correct. So that the reasons and motivations why people move in this area and stay within, within this area is not to build a single family house. It's, it's more a social network that plays also a role. And the last point is, of course, also the, um, the close contact with the municipalities is really important. We conducted 27, 28 interviews out of the 75 municipalities we have because the way mayors see their city and their town and their future development is really one of the major things to, um, to shape this region. 
And in many workshops, we speak with these mayors and other experts from the region. And we exchange our calculations and visions for the region with their with what's happening actually on the ground. So we know that um, the will to, re to really build in a sustainable way within the cities, in the course of the city is there, and also the will to, um, to widen the housing to, for example, elderly people to have a more diverse housing is there, but also there are clear barriers and our way to tackle this is to bring the region together and to be a voice also towards the politic. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Anna Dunkel. It was really interesting what you're telling us, especially about um, how you managed to uh, uh, bring in the inhabitants perspective. I think we can talk about this later, but now let's go on to the Nuremberg metropolitan region, which is uh, Christa Standecker, my colleague from the EKM and uh, the CEO of the Nuremberg Metropolitan Region. Your project, Christa, is Repola Regional Specific Land Management in Urban Rural Partnerships. And, you know, as we all know, economic growth, demo demographic developments, and changed lifestyle has intensified the competition for land use as a resource and the manufacture of regional products helps to increase the regional added value, improve the quality of resources and reduce land use conflicts between urban and rural areas. And I know Christa uh, Nuremberg is really good in this and I'm really, really interested to hear what you're doing in the Reprola uh, project. Christa, now it's your turn, the floor is open. <laughs> Thank you very much for the occasion to, um to show the, um, what we are doing in Repola in Nuremberg metropolitan region. Uh, I begin just to uh, talk uh, about the uh, structure of the Nuremberg metropolitan region. It has uh, 3.5 million inhabitants. It's a voluntary association of 11 independent towns and cities and 23 districts in northern Bavaria. It comprises the major part of northern Bavaria. We have a cross domestic product of uh, 143 billion euros, which is 20% bigger than the economic performance of Hungary. The spatial structure of the metropolitan region is polycentric a network of connections to smaller centers and hubs surrounds the densely populated Nuremberg Fürth Erlangen Triangle with about 1.5 million inhabitants. So you find in the Nuremberg metropolitan region, urban regions with metropolitan functions, growth poles in rural areas, but also large shares of peripheral regions with a very rural character, means a heterogeneous um, region. Uh, on the next chart, we see that uh, although we have a strong economic sector, uh, regional foods and specialities form an important part of the regional identity of the people who live in our region. <clears throat> you might have tasted some, some Nuremberg sausages at a hotel breakfast buffet or Franconian wine, or you might have been to the Franconian Switzerland with one of the highest densities of breweries in Europe. That's why for many years, the strengthening of regional products is a major field of action in shaping the urban-rural partnership in the Nuremberg metropolitan region. Since 10 years, the agricultural areas are under pressure. With that, the attractive cultural landscape also is disappearing, and we are having losses regarding regional food sovereignty. The process of the agricultural areas decrease goes gradual and unnoticed. 
Currently, we are developing a mission statement for land management and regional produce. We are also developing a monitoring tool to make these trends visible at the local level and to enable the mayors to taking countermeasures. The common mission statement for the Nuremberg Metropolitan Region as home for regional products aims to secure the, life, the high uh, life quality on the basis of a balanced urban-rural interdependence. On the third chart, you see uh, the principles of our governance. Our governance is created as an urban-rural partnerships of equals. Politicians, academics and entrepreneurs drew up the rules for cooperation in the 2005 Charter. The rules are viable and have remained valid until the present day. It is particularly the principles of cooperation as equal partners and the urban-rural partnership which have made Nuremberg well known throughout Europe. Urban and rural areas have one voice each in the Metropolitan Regions Council with about 50 Lord Mayors and, uh, and uh, district presidents, regardless of their population and economic strength. We strictly adhere to the principle of, subs to, of subsidiarity with selecting, uh, when selecting projects, we only track a project which will create genuine added value and which can be more easily achieved by the region than by smaller alliances. And last but not least, it's a voluntary association. That means that people cooperate voluntarily and not because of law. This um, characterizes our governance very, very much. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Christa. From my point of view, your approach, regional pro projects, to use regional projects for shaping and strengthening the rural urban partnership is really quite unique, as far as I know, in Germany at least. Perhaps we hear something about that from our international guests. Um, but now to the third input, which comes from the metropolitan region of Rhein-Neckar. It is Christine Kleef. It is a holistic approach to sustainable regional development. For all of you who are not that familiar, familiar with Germany, the metropolitan region of Rhein-Neckar includes so well-known cities like Heidelberg and like Mannheim and Ludwigshafen. And the two main rivers, Rhine and Neckar, give, are giving the region their name. So it is the region around Heidelberg, Mannheim, and Ludwigshafen. As far as I've understood, and this is most interesting, you are using the UN Sustainable Development Goals to organize a process of participatory regional policy. Wow, this in my ears uh, sounds a huge task. Um, especially since I'm sure and I know that there are conflicting goals in your region. So, Christina Cleave, let's hear um, how you manage this. Uh, we're just at the beginning. We don't know uh, if we will have success, but I hope so. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction and good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody from, from Mannheim. So I may start with a with a short presentation of the region as well. Within, you will just have we can have the slide with the with the region, Tanya. Yes, with an area of oh sorry my telephone is no not now. With an area of approximately five thousand six hundred square kilometers and two point million inhabitants, uh, our Rhein-Neckar metropolitan region is one of the smaller metropolitan regions in Germany. And with seven counties and eight independent towns, it makes up to a total of 219 municipalities, spreading, as it's typical for our metropolitan regions, over urban and rural areas with a wide range, no, with a wide range uh, of population density. 
the largest cities, um, Jakob Richter, you told already, are Mannheim, Ludwigshafen, and Heidelberg, and it's a polycentric structure and mix of different urban and economic profiles, which make the region special, strong, and I think also a bit more resilient. Despite its relative small size, the region has a very strong economy with many highly innovative companies and clusters. In addition to the three regional main centers, there are about 30 medium-sized centers spread across the region. And in the rural areas, the population density falls in part to values of less than 100 uh, inhabitants per square kilometer, for example, uh, for example in, the, in the face of uh, the forest of uh, Palatinate. The spatial balance between urban and rural areas and cities of different sizes, which are functionally closely intertwined in terms of labor markets, supply relations or transport, is in many respects a strength to the region. And I think also important as a kind of start condition for our really complex project is a specific governance of regional development that has evolved over the years and has proved to be both functional and agile. I don't want to go into institutional or organizational details here, but let's just let it at the finding that local authorities in the, in the rhein neckar region have a long tradition of working very closely together in institutionalized bodies, in informal networks, or just project related, they face the challenges of a future proof development together. So, Unfortunately, this was the only picture I have to show now. The next slides are only uh, uh, some, some a short text. You, you may put the next slide to tell you what the project is about and what are its objectives. Uh, as you saw in the title, it's a, a, a complex holistic approach to sustainable development on regional and local level in parallel. It is about a consistent orientation of regional and local development strategies towards the sustainability goals that are most relevant to our region. And this in a joint, coordinated, open and transparent process involving civil society. In order to, to um, get to start this process uh, in cooperation with the pilot city of Heidelberg, later on in some years or in some months, we will, of course, also join the smaller cities in the rural areas. We have successfully participated in a nationwide call and will now be funded over a period of two years by uh, with federal um, support as a regional open government laboratory. These uh, open government labs provide a framework for multi-level multi cooperation between local administrations, local politics and civil society with, with the participation of uh, academia and local businesses where appropriate. In our regional government um, lab Rhein-Neckar, we will focus on the integration of sustainability goals in the regional development process in a systematic and measurable manner and in a constant dialogue with the local level. Therefore, the laboratory aims to identify and substantiate um, particularly relevant topics and challenges of regional cooperation, for example, in the areas of housing, mobility, or climate protection. The laboratory aims to achieve a generally accepted inventory of sustainability based on the UN SDGs and to raise awareness and involve the civil society in the debate on sustainability. Regional and municipal, uh, municipal development concepts are to be integrated and interlinked. This will be the most important and most difficult uh, challenge, I, I think. Um, the overarching goal is to initiate the development of society as a whole and to establish processes of sustainable regional and municipal, municipal development including strategies and solutions also for managing conflicting goals, for example, conflicts between nature protection and housing or climate protection and transport. And perhaps only to say this in parenthesis, the need for such conflict management strategies is currently to be seen by the disputes surrounding the forest clearing of the, for the controversial extension of the uh, motorway um, A49 in Hessen. So this, the, these kinds of development we certainly want to avoid in our region. So the overall aim is to bring problems that cannot be solved in small uh, scale space structures to a regional level where they can be addressed with the involvement of many actors from the urban and rural context. 
parochialism is to be replaced by intercommunal intercommunal cooperation within urban urban rural context. The next slide, please, to speak about the, the governance and some uh, activities that have begun. Um, I'd like to highlight the following elements, which mark also that we are still at an early stage of the process. So we started in summer with an overlay uh, online survey among citizens on the subject of sustainability. This uh, survey has just come to an end and we will um, present the, the first results in an online session on Saturday, public of course. And um, with about 1000 participants in this survey, the survey itself of course is not representative, but it indicates the issues that are most important to, to the citizens in our region in relation to sustainability. For example, coming to speak to the to the 17 um, UN SDGs, the most important in our region for the citizens who, who took part in the survey revealed to be good health and well-being and quality education. So it's not even not the environment. So I was really surprised by this um, by this result. And we also saw I, I can't go into details here. We also saw differences in the um, in the um, importance um, that has been addressed to do the different um, SDGs uh, between people and citizens in the rural areas in, in smaller towns and those uh, living in, in the urban centers uh, in the big cities. This is uh, also quite interesting to, to have a closer look at this. In the ongoing process, we will develop, of course, more participatory modules for the further involvement of civil society and other stakeholders. Another basic element we assigned is that we assigned the um, UN SDGs uh, to the regional fields of action of our regional development strategy. And uh, the results of this uh, assignment will be published in a special number of in, uh, our newsletter as a kind of a communication tool. In parallel, we are in the process um, of establishing an, an openly accessible monitoring system dedicated to the sustainability goals, and this integrated in our um, online tool, the Rhinecker Metropolitan Atlas. In the first steps, this means, of course, to identify relevant and, if possible, freely accessible data, because we want to concentrate and focus on open data. By checking the relevant indicators, for example, of the Bertelsmann Stiftung, that is well known for, for um, these indicators in, in Germany. And we will have to look to what degree these data are important for our specific regional activity fields and to what degree these indicators can be influenced on the local or regional level. In the final stage, of the laboratory, we should have achieved a generally accepted inventory on the basis of the UN SDGs. And in this target perspective, we are really very, very glad that we will receive highly competent support for this over the next two years. This is a decision that has been taken some days ago only, as we are fortunately among the pilots of the second phase of the OECD program on a territorial approach to the SDGs. So this is really, uh, we are really lucky that uh, the open government in this um, approach, uh, the project uh, with the OECD program is just uh, in, the, in the same uh, period of time. So concerning the, the governance uh, to achieve the, the mentioned objectives, um, of course, the, the whole process is subject to the general values of open government partnerships which are transparency, accountability of government and the direct involvement of civil society and stakeholder groups. Well, it's really one of the main uh, purposes to, to have a um, <clears throat> full inclusion of civil society in the decision-making process and the harnessing of the reasons societal innovative potential for the sake of regional development. So finally, we are talking about uh, co co-production and co-creation as main principles of action. Who are the partners of this project? So in the beginning, uh, it's the Verband Region Rhein-Neckar, the, the regional planning association of the Rhein-Neckar metropolitan region, who is the lead partner and coordinator of the process. On the local level, as I said already, we start with the city of Heidelberg as an urban pilot. 
and we have uh, other partners that are formally involved these uh, that come from uh, civil society among those for example politics for tomorrow which is in a non-partisan initiative that promotes innovation for and with the public sector for sustainable development besides we are working together with the open government partnership baden württemberg for the open government network germany and another initiative uh, on local level named Action Alliance Sustainable Heidelberg. So the whole work of the laboratory is or will be characterized by transparency, dialogue, orientated participation, co-production, co-creation, digital technologies, very important, data and organizational culture. Digital, uh, digital tools shall be used to a greater extent and the citizens shall be involved via low threshold participation formats. All in all, this project, you might have seen it, um, is really an adventure for us. It's a common learning space for joint revision and uh, implementation. Christina, I don't want to be yes. rude, but could you, could you please come, come to an, to an end? end? Really yeah, finished. wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Uh, yes. No, so it's really a kind of an adventure, and we we are uh, really um, would see what what uh, we have lessons to 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 learn and to, to that can be shared. It's quite complex undertaking, and this is main important. The process is at least as important, I think, as the result. And of course, we will be happy and glad to share our lessons learned and experience with everybody who is interested. For example, your, everybody, I think, is welcome to join for the um, roundtables in the OECD program. The next will be uh, in the uh, springtime of uh, 2021. So everyone may join if he's interested to share our first progress experiences. Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for the, this invitation. This invitation now for something completely different, I guess. It's uh, Stuttgart Metropolitan Region, a neighbor of uh, Rhein-Neckar mm -hmm. Metropolitan Region. It's um, Stefanie Klaus, not Sabine, okay. like it's in the program. Stefanie Klaus uh, from Verband Region Stuttgart. It's the Ramona Project, City Regional Compensation Strategies as an Engine for Sustainable Land Use. Stephanie Klaus, please tell us what that's all about. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so Ramona, uh, we take part in Ramona as for Bandregion Stuttgart, which is only a part of the metropolitan Stuttgart region. Uh, but I think it's the um, most complicated part and most dynamic part. Um, I'm a landscape architect working for the Verbandregion Stuttgart, uh, which is the planning region in the southwest of Germany. Um, could we ch uh, change the slide, please? So the topographical setting, I've uh, added some um, dynamic um, slides so you can see the uh, dynamic um, evolution of uh, housing and uh, industrial areas within the last, uh, I think, 100 years. Um, so we have a very, very dynamic um, uh, region um, and a very economically strong region in, in the southwest of Germany uh, with all the problems and uh, effects on landscape and nature uh, coming along with this. We have 179 uh, municipalities within the region of Stuttgart. It's not the metropolitan region, but the region of Stuttgart uh, with um, altogether 2. million inhabitants. Um, this high impact on landscape and nature, of course, um, um, is a very big problem, um, but the German nature conservation law gives us a little help um, to compensate these impacts. Um, so it is um, called uh, Eingriffsausgleichsregelung, Impact Compensation Regulation, um, which, has, um, which means that you have uh, to restore nature functions uh, after effects on nature on the same extent, but of course not uh, on the space. Um, this duty to compensate is often perceived as a real burden uh, to communities. It needs additional money, additional land, and as well as additional efforts, especially if let through regularly. So please, next slide. So what is now the innovative approach of Ramona? Uh, we want to turn this uh, burden of compensation into a chance. Um, so Ramona tries um, 
to get a chance for nature and inhabitants. Um, to achieve this, we try to connect compensation measures with a multitude of other topics. That is habitat connectivity, climate adaption, healthcare, recreation, and um, care for endangered species. We try to detect areas within the whole region which are suitable for all or most of these topics on the same spot. We call this the multifunction approach. Uh, it is quite essential if you bear in mind the high pressures on, on land on the region. We try to support our communities with knowledge on multifunctional strategies and uh, a strong effort to investigate solutions for the cooperation between agriculture and compensation. Next slide, please. Um, the governance, <laughs> we are, Ramona is based on many different partners uh, out of universities. That is the RITH Aachen and the University of Hohenheim, which has a strong agricultural um, stress. Then we have municipal partners, the city of Stuttgart and Filderstadt. We have one nature conservation organization. And of course, we as Stuttgart region. So this ensures the dissemination of the results on quite different levels. We as Verband Region Stuttgart will use the results of the project um, for municipal consultancy to foster intermunicipal cooperation and for an exemplary realization of a multifunctional compensation measure. Of course, we are going to disseminate the results of the project um, at the end of the process. We are in the middle of the process, so we are um, had already two years of analyzing and development of measures, and uh, we hope that we can continue for uh, two more years for the realization of projects and uh, realization of this municipal consultancy. Thank you very much. Thank you. That were quite for quite interesting or very interesting projects, and of course they were quite different. Um, yeah, that was the approach we wanted to show you about rural and urban partnerships. And so I'm really interested to hear what the metrics partners are saying about this. And I'm giving the word back to Hank. Hank. Yep. Thank you, Jakob. Indeed, uh, very interesting examples. Um, and and I can also say very advanced when I compare that to, uh, let's say, the wider European setting. And that has everything to do with, with support from national government. Uh, laws, uh, etc. So there are different conditions, let's say, which also create different opportunities for for the for regional or local authorities. Um, in uh, we have members around all, all of Europe, and we see um, uh, areas which uh, have, let's say, a core city and a vast uh, a rural area. For instance, around Torino, uh, which is a city, a huge city, but let's say it has also the Alps in its region. And you can imagine what kind of constraints that gives to to the regional authorities. I mean, that's very different to deal with mountains and sheep or, or let's say issues in the city. Um, but of course, you see also a lot of members uh, like like actually all the German metropolitan regions. We see a lot of members where there's much more spread of urbanization uh, and a more scattered uh, pattern. Um, I know I, I no, I'm not always used. I'm not always allowed to use that word. But it is, I think, in the perception of many people, it is a bit like that, that, uh, let's say, the urbanizational agglomeration is more spread, which, by the way, of course, gives its own uh, constraints, its own uh, difficulties on these challenges. And I think those were very well expressed in the various uh, examples from Germany. We have um, on our list uh, four um, uh, examples, of which I must say that the Helsinki example, unfortunately, cannot join us. She's taken unwell. Uh, we got her presentation, but I'm, to be honest, I don't think I can explain what she uh, what she wanted to explain there because it was very dense. But we will have uh, three others, and I want to start with Karen McCormick from Lyon, uh, the Metropole Lyon. Uh, it has diff different, uh, uh, let's say, levels of authorities, and Karen McCormick is from Lyon, who more or less sells to all those various levels of authorities. So, Karen, uh, please. Um, Please come, and uh, Stephen Gallagher will uh, will um, share your presentation. Thank, Thank you very much for welcoming me. So I'm Karen McCormick from the Lyon Metropolitan Urban Agency. I will say a few words about it uh, after a wider presentation of Lyon. You can pass next one, please. 
so here, here you are, Lyon in France. Uh, you can see where is it and um, different uh, scale of uh, territories and uh, of our polycentric uh, urban system. Uh, so uh, we are close to uh, Nuremberg because we have 3.3 uh, million inhabitants uh, organized in two main uh, urban areas. Uh, Lyon is uh, 2.2 million and Saint-Étienne is uh, half, uh, half thousand uh, one. Uh, we have six uh, core cities, uh, more than uh, 50,000 inhabitants, uh, which are uh, linked together and, uh, and make the polycentric system. And we have also in our uh, me metropolitan area more than uh, 1,000 municipalities, which is quite huge, but some of them, most of them are villages and not a real town. Uh, so 1.4 million jobs and uh, uh, 150,000 students in this area. It's most of it uh, open spaces, 80% uh, 80, 80 and we have a, a good production in agriculture and nice um, natural spaces also. Uh, we can go to the next one. Next one again, please. Yes. Here, I think this, uh, this slide is interesting because it shows all the question of uh, the good perimeter, uh, good border systems. We are always wondering at uh, which uh, perimeters could be the good one to hack or to plan. And you can see that uh, in France and uh, most, uh, more, more, more than uh, in uh, in Lyon, you have um, a system quite com complex. Uh, the first line uh, represents the institutional um, parameters. You have from the right part uh, the parameter in green, meaning uh, the, the town of Lyon. And the second one from the right part uh, is the metropole of Lyon. It's uh, 59 towns together, uh, organized in, uh, in uh, a big municipality. Uh, it has full of the competencies as a, a municipality can have, uh, and more, more than municipalities uh, even. You have uh, something we call the Pôle Metropolitan. It has been created uh, nearly 10 years ago. And it's, um, it's something strongly required from the political part. And they ask state to make a law to make it possible. Um, uh, it's, um, it's an institutional uh, parameter uh, with uh, main agglomeration in the metropole of Lyon uh, area. So you have uh, Saint-Etienne's uh, agglomeration region. You have a Vienna uh, region in the south of Lyon, and you have uh, the east part of Lyon, and one other uh, last uh, uh, agglomeration or region uh, in the north of Lyon. And um, it's um, it's a group of uh, of uh, political leaders who are um, uh, who are. Uh, uh, together to think about common uh, common um, interests uh, in the metropolitan area, and the main one is the uh, the, the land plan for the, the airport of Lyon. Uh, the region of the, the airport of Lyon is in between several uh, different uh, uh, authorities. Uh, and it's a nonsense uh, compared to the function uh, it is uh, used for. So they decided to, uh, to create this institutional parameter and then uh, to work all together 
uh, to think the development of this uh, common uh, uh, needs uh, because it's more than an airport it's also a logistic uh, area and it's a big economic part with the um, uh, issue of um, uh, agriculture protection spaces so you have it but uh, ten, it has been created in uh, 10 years ago but it's still difficult to, to make it work and it was a good thinking but uh, in fact uh, for several reasons uh, it doesn't work very well um, I have to say after you have uh, the local stat uh, perimeter, you can see uh, in, in the left part. And the last one, the biggest one, is what we call in France a uh, region, uh, which is a huge, uh, a huge territory uh, from uh, the, the center of uh, France to, uh, to Genova uh, uh, and uh, Italy. So it's quite huge, uh, but it's uh, it's also an institutional authority, and uh, it uh, it is about uh, strategic planning also. So all this authority has a word to say in strategic planning uh, in the metropole of Lyon uh, area, and then uh, in pink color. Uh, the, the second uh, line, uh, you have uh, four different uh, areas uh, which are about uh, strategic planning. The, from the largest one, you have uh, 13, uh, 13 yes, um, territories of strategic planning. Uh, we call it uh, strategic planning, we call it SCOT. And all together, we call it InterScot, but it's not uh, an institutional um, area. It's a voluntary area uh, to uh, exchange and uh, to negotiate a strategic baseline. Uh, and then you have uh, 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 one, a bigger, bigger than the agglomeration, we call it uh, Metropole of Lyon. It's bigger of it because you have uh, the east part with the airport. And then you have uh, another parameter of, uh, of uh, planification, strategic planification. It's more a, a state perimeter from state. Uh, and after you have also uh, an, uh, a last one, uh, uh, again, so many different uh, scale of, um, of strategic planning. It's important to say maybe that um, the one from state uh, has uh, quite uh, a good impact on uh, strategic planning because it leads all the local territories uh, and institutional territories uh, together to, uh, to make a common project to resist from the local, from the state um, level. And uh, state level is really from uh, the top to the bottom and with no word to say. But if territories are linked together, they can have a dialogue and they can have maybe uh, 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 rules that are uh, modulated uh, when it's uh, when it's necessary. So uh, I think uh, the rule of state and uh, legal level uh, is quite interesting to make the territories uh, collaborate uh, all together. And after the the line uh, under is about uh, different uh, thinking areas, and it's more from uh, statistics and knowledge. Uh, and I will stop uh, here. It's, it was important to, to show you uh, all these different uh, parameters, areas, because it, uh, it shows uh, the difficulty uh, to work on the good, uh, on the good uh, level. Um, 
After, uh, you can pass to the next one, please. I wanted to have a word on my organization, uh, which uh, is uh, donc, uh, Lyon Urban uh, uh, Metropolitan Area uh, Urban Agency. Uh, why? is because uh, we lead uh, an informal strategic plan uh, for the 13 uh, territories who each of it uh, does um, a strategic plan. Um, we lead a voluntary um, approach, a non-formal approach, to um, make the baseline in common and to build a common project, a common strategic plan, uh, plan and to chair uh, engineering uh, um, tool uh, to, uh, to make uh, each project comparable to others and uh, to have the same vocabulary of what it's uh, polarity and the same vocabulary to uh, transportation uh, topic or agriculture or things like that um, uh, or what you know. Uh, so we, we lead a coordination of uh, these 13 regional master plans in a cooperative approach called InterScot. Um, and it's important uh, to, to build the common vision. And for that, you can you can go. Uh, we have uh, uh, you, you can go faster um, in the other next one. Uh, all the metropolitan area uh, of Lyon uh, can share a tool uh, of engineering in the public interest. So we are a non-benefit uh, organization. And uh, our partners are cities and uh, local authorities and all the authorities, institutional authorities I have shown you uh, before on the, the map, maps plan. Uh, and we have uh, competencies in uh, all the topics of sustainable development. Uh, from uh, housing to uh, uh, energy and from also uh, uh, supply and things like that, economic, uh, housing, etc. Uh, and also we have um, partners from uh, transportation and it's quite a uh, complex system organization in, uh, in our region. Okay, Karen, may I? May I urge you a little bit to speed up? Uh, it is very interesting, but we have also some other speakers, so please. So you can go uh, faster. Next one. Uh, many experts, I told you, and statistic and data, and you can go uh, another one. Next one. So uh, we are um, a place where uh, politicians and technical parts can uh, have uh, uh, can share a table on different subjects all together or a part of it and it's always um, think every year uh, from the needs territories has, uh, have and they call us to organize uh, informal cooperation and um, we, we work for to, to make the deal, this cooperation uh, going more formally uh, and uh, and to be uh, com contracted uh, between territories. Uh, for, ex for instance, actually we have uh, uh, worked well and engaged on a strategic plan of uh, power supply uh, between uh, the metropole of Lyon and uh, uh, neighbors uh, on the west part of Lyon. It was just for instance about collaboration. So, for, so it's finished. If you need to to go faster, I finish. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you very much, uh, Karen.
that's a com indeed a complete different sto story than uh, in Germany and have, has of course everything to do with also cultural aspects, I think. So we, I think we can talk about that a bit later because I think that is an important aspect that is not always easy to put in, in let's say, in plans or uh, uh, regulations. I mean, we perceive things sometimes in a very different way. And I think Lyon shows, uh, shows that very well. Uh, but it is uh, managed and it is uh, also well done, I can say, because Metrics is actually based in Lyon and we are neighbors. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, I would like to, to go on to pass on to the next one, which is the Basque country, Ignacio de la Puerta, who is the director of the Institute for Planning in Lyon. Sorry, the Department for Planning, the Basque government. There's Ignacio, welcome. Hi. Hi, you go everybody. a bit further to the southwest, uh, so please, uh, the word is to you. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me, because uh, somebody has just started chopping with a jackhammer. <laughs> I don't know if you hear it, but it's really, really noisy. <laughs> Excuse okay, me. Okay, so you were, you were at a dentist, but it's uh, it's construction work. Well, it is how it is. So don't worry, I have, I have the same, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do my best, but <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Ignacio de la Puerta, Nacho de la Puerta, uh, Director for Territorial Planning, Urbanism and Urban Regeneration in the Basque Government. Uh, I suppose you know that the uh, Basque Country is one of all 17 uh, autonomous communities in Spain, is northern Spain. Yes, uh, the border with France, and uh, we have a very, very please next, next please. We have a very small country with uh, about uh, seven thousand square kilometers, with uh, two point one uh, million inhabitants, but uh, very, very, very uh, density in urban areas. All the pollution is in the 7% of the territory, so the rest of the territory is uh, mainly used for forest, agricultural, and all kind of natural resources. And we have, excuse me, we have more than 22% of our territory uh, with uh, different kind of uh, natural spaces or regulation. Uh, what noise? Excuse me. <laughs> in the 19, uh, we launched the first uh, territorial law, uh, and uh, in development of that law, uh, we uh, developed our territorial uh, planning guidelines in 1997. We have just uh, renewed it, with, uh, just, it was approved uh, last uh, July, 2017, uh, 19, excuse me, and uh, we have transformed the model of our territory. We can you can see in this uh, image in the first uh, uh, territorial guidelines. We the the gray line, the gray first of all, were the main elements in the territory, and the green areas were like the isla isles in the in the space. And now we are uh, putting the focus on the green infrastructures with the green corridors and uh, ecological corridors. Yeah, uh, uh, putting also the focus on the blue uh, infrastructures. Next, please. In the, the term of uh, the governance, we have a very complex uh, country. We have the past government for all the country, but also uh, we have three uh, territories, historical territories, with uh, another sub-regional governments, which are called Diputación, Diputación Foral. We have uh, competences like a state, because these three uh, sub-regional governments uh, manage their own taxes. And they have also competences in the different uh, regulation of law. So uh, we have a governance structured uh, by the Territorial Planning Commission, 
which depends on the bus government and it's it's composed uh, uh, with the bus government all the departments of the bus government also uh, representative of the three uh, diputacion foral uh, the three sub-regional governments and also representatives from the 251 municipalities we have yes please so in the uh, for the past uh, country all the territory we have our territorial plan planning guidelines we depend of the bus government next please the territory is uh, focused on this kind of uh, multi, multi functional areas with the three main capitals bilbao san sebastian and vitoria and 15 functional areas with the most rural uh, uh, like counties with the main cities and all the surroundings this depends mainly on the provincial councils we have one a territory, a partial territorial plan for each of these uh, is one of these functional areas yes please but also we have the sectoral territorial plans focus on different uh, sectoral uh, tasks this uh, kind of the, the territorial plans depend on the sectoral administration we have developed uh, nine sectoral territorial plans like economic activities and shopping centers railways margins and river and streams coastal white power and forestry roads and so on and then with all these kind of territorial plans, uh, the 251 municipalities must uh, develop and design the general urban plans according to what it uh, is uh, decided and the criteria we have in all these kind of territorial plans. Next, please. One of the uh, territorial plans is the oil forestry that uh, analyze and establish the rules uh, on the in the rural areas and one of the elements that is, has been uh, mentioned in one of the presentation is the uh, the pressure that uh, the rural area has uh, been supported supporting uh, for the singular family houses that everybody wanted to go there but uh, from since 1997 with the first uh, territorial guidelines uh, this kind of use is uh, is forbidden in the rural areas. Only uh, farmers can have their house in in this territory. So, is one of the elements that uh, has permitted us us to avoid this kind of pressure that uh, has been mentioned in another uh, uh, presentation. Please, next, please. And uh, in this uh, in this sense, we must uh, say that uh, we have a territory that urban and rural is very close. It's like uh, only one territory, only one uh, uh, continuous territory with a strong relationship between the urban and rural uh, spaces and, and habitats. And sometimes even the forest became a uh, school uh, picture and uh, cultural uh, uh, focus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ignacio. That was actually your last couple of sentences were really interesting because I think indeed uh, the idea of one territory, urban and rural as one, uh, that is also mentioned in our uh, expert group before that, uh, that we might even we, we use these words, of course, in a professional way, but many people don't see it like that. And, uh, uh -huh. There were some people, I remember uh, Reinhard Henke uh, saying that we have to get rid of those words. It's one territory and we need uh, they need each other. So I think that, that is a very interesting concept of thinking. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, you. I would like now to continue with Julita Milos Augustovska from West Pomerania. There she is, she is yeah. on the construction site, I understood. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, now I use my uh, headphones, so I hope that it will be a slightly better. Uh, can you hear me good? Yeah? Okay. Can be well, yeah. Uh, perfect. 
so let me briefly introduce you uh, from where I am today. Uh, I represent the regional office for special planning in uh, West Pomerania. And uh, West Pomerania is a neighboring region to uh, Brandenburg and mecklenburg vorpommern German federal states. Um, and is located at the Baltic seaside. And I would like you, I would like to shortly introduce you today with the idea of cross-border metropolitan region of Szczecin, where the rural urban partnerships are one of six uh, topics we are dealing with, next to mobility, tourism, uh, future industries, and networks. Um, and when I say cross-border uh, region, I mean the German-Polish border, the city of Szczecin, the capital city in the region, with uh, um, about 400,000 uh, residents, uh, which is really located almost at the German-Polish border, 10, 15 kilometers away. And uh, because Hank said I have only seven minutes, <laughs> I were concentrated to, uh, to, to really uh, give you some uh, free messages or free uh, reflections about the rural urban areas or rural urban partnerships in our region. So, first of all, uh, I think that in general, this topic of the rural urban partnerships is quite strong in Germany. In Poland, uh, this is not so well uh, developed, not so uh, widespread, it's not so popular. And uh, we have to say that in this particular area, in the German-Polish borderland, it's even weaker uh, in general. Uh, why is that? Uh, because the weaknesses of those relations uh, result, among others, from different uh, uh, or differences in the demographic uh, potential. Uh, Polish society is about 20 years younger than uh, in Germany. And although there is a quite strong migration of Polish families from Polish city, from Szczecin, uh, towards neighboring German communes, uh, uh, because the housing prices or because the fact that the young Polish families, they cannot afford uh, housing in a city center. Um, still, I think that we can rather describe those relationships as colonization and not the integration. Uh, they are just using uh, opportunities, economical opportunities, uh, and, uh, but they don't feel integrated and they do, do not, they aren't interested actually. So uh, the next challenge of what to do to improve those relations uh, is, of course, the question of very old perception of villages and towns. Uh, so today we have a situation that neither the village is this traditional village with cows and fields, uh, nor the city is a metropolis with skyscrapers. Uh, and uh, it brings us to the conclusion that, of course, the most important aspect we have to work on is the awareness and ability of or for cooperation. Uh, breaking this strong subordination of development of rural regions to urban regions. So, uh, reduction of competition in favor of cooperation. So, summing up, I think that the rural urban partnerships in a cross border metropolitan region of, of Szczecin, uh, maybe first of all, uh, we focused on two directions in this area. Mobility, understood as access to work and home, uh, but also in general, a better transportation uh, system uh, for the whole surroundings. And secondly, tourism as one day trip uh, uh, possibilities or just recreation in a whole, in a close neighborhood. And probably it's not a most revealing observation, but the only possi possible way of governance it is a soft territorial cooperation, which uh, complements existing uh, uh, and is institutionalized forms of cooperation and can really fill this gap uh, in management. Uh, and the main output of, the, of our project of the rural urban cooperation I mentioned within this cross-border 
region of Szczecin is to start or to have a monitoring system where we could really see trends and interactions in this area. Uh, in our territorial cooperation, we go beyond this currently available financial and regulatory framework, developing an evidence-based uh, base uh, demonstrating socio-economical needs and opportunities. And uh, that is our, um, let's say, step towards forming uh, partnerships involving relevant par uh, public and uh, private uh, institutions. So if you have any reflections or ideas, what kind of indicators we could use to visual this, uh, visual, uh, visualize this process, I will be very happy to be able to share it. Um, soft cooperation is, of course, only a substitute for institutional. Uh, it's not a substitute for, uh, for institutional special planning. And that is why the democratic legitimacy of this process and uh, the results, they can be quite difficult to achieve. It means that all the partners, they have to recognize this added value, but uh, uh, unfortunately, there is a high risk of uh, that, for example, the situation like the pandemic right now uh, could harm this soft cooperation because we do not have uh, really any uh, responsibilities uh, in a national law to do that. It's only based on a goodwill, and uh, and we see a lot of um, uh, problems with this question of closing the border in a in a in a spring uh, in the beginning of the pandemic uh, for th this very fragile uh, partnerships or cooperation we already uh, uh, build on. Now I will just uh, send you an, our um, uh, website of, uh, of our special planning office. If you would like to have more information about this project, this is a German-Polish cooperation, but we are uh, working uh, in this project also with different other um, uh, institutions from, uh, from uh, the whole European Union, actually. Uh, so that would be all for me for now, and I'm happy to answer your question and uh, to uh, discuss some reflections. Thank you very much, uh, Yulita. That was, I think, also very, very insightful. Uh, by the way, if, I think I hope the technicians can share the link uh, that you just sent to our chat so that people okay. who are listening uh, don't worry, but the people who are listening who can follow that as well, uh, that link. Okay. Thank you very much. That also gave, an, again, another in, uh, which um, made me think um, in terms of questions. Uh, please, please, by the way, people who are listening, please raise your questions in the chat box and we will receive them and we can send them to the right uh, person to answer them. Um, for me, um, uh, I, I see a sort of... Um, almost extreme and extremes of, on the one hand, is, is this metropolitan region, uh, like like the German uh, uh, partners today also express their project, is, is it almost a condition for for a successful urban-rural partnership? Um, but I see, on the other hand, also the, the Basque example, uh, where, where apparently you had the competences, but apparently also people's awareness that, uh, you know, for, for instance, uh, not allowing any private homes anymore in the in the countryside in these agro agricultural areas, uh, that that was quite a bold decision. I can imagine that people were not might not have been uh, let's say in favor of that. So maybe Ignacio, how, was that a sort of easy, well, a relatively easy step to take? Was that sort of accepted? Because apparently uh, it is it is done already. It's more than twenty years ago now, which which you can indeed see now in your in your landscape. Maybe Ignacio, can you say yeah, something about that? Yeah, it, it was really uh, a problem at the beginning, but uh, now it's absolutely uh, normal and assumed by everybody. Uh, it has a very important uh, impact in the price of uh, singular houses in the country because uh, there are no so much uh, offer. So uh, those that are there, has a very, very high price. But on the other hand, we are preserving our landscape, our uh, 
natural territory uh, out of uh, this kind of housing, uh, urbanizing all the all the land. So it's a very very uh, strong. Even today we have some problems uh, with uh, those that wants to want to to build their homes or even uh, singular houses uh, for rent for renting. Uh, but then they will uh, buy them to the owner, to even owners. But it's uh, now I think it's very, very a peaceful, uh, a peaceful task. Uh, we have also uh, developed a, a, a new figure in the plan, in the municipal plannings, which is the, perim the perimeter of, of growth. We have this. Uh, Mm, draw, they have drawn the limit in which uh, each each uh, city can uh, increase their urban uh, urban land, urban soil. I don't know who it's in. Yeah, land use. Yeah. Yes, for land for urban land use. Yes. So we are uh, containing the the size of uh, our cities in order to re. re Rebuild our cities, trying to use the soil we have uh, occupied with uh, our previous uh, towns and cities. That is something like that is is happening in in Lyon, as far as I know, Karen. Uh, can you maybe say something about that. The the let's say restrictions on land use for for urbanization. Yeah. Can you maybe say something about that, Karen? You have to unmute yourself then. And maybe, Ignacio, yeah, you mute yourself because you have the constructor. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, yes, we have now a new injunction for, from a state level and legal level uh, to stop uh, a sp a sprawl uh, lending use. Um, and we have to build in the areas already built. Uh, and uh, it's a new law that we don't uh, really know how to, to, to make it uh, real in our area. Uh, of course, we were already uh, working on density and densifying uh, um, urban areas, but um, and more, more often because of the COVID, uh, um, COVID thing, uh, we need uh, uh, spaces to, to have a recreation uh, and we need, we need it in, in town. And it, it, it put again uh, the question of uh, the good level of density in towns uh, and, uh, and it also uh, replaces the debate on uh, the polycentric system on the middle of the agenda because uh, we need to have uh, density, we, we need to have agricultural spaces to be autonome, uh, nearly autonome in uh, in um, supplying uh, plan for our supplying plan, but uh, uh, but it's not uh, it's not easy uh, it's not uh, easy to to think it and to have the, the good solutions. Uh, yes, so just for now we are starting a new reflection on uh, zero uh, artifi uh, artificialization of land use, zero uh, building. Okay. okay, and maybe th there is a question which I think relates to this issue uh, from, uh, from Lisa Standecker. To Stephanie Klaus, uh, could you give a practical example for the multifunctional approach to compensation? I mean, that is of course, uh, apparently a very well developed <laughs> tool in, in, uh, in the Stuttgart region. Uh, yes, I as, as uh, Stephanie or as Krista said, I cannot imagine how it works concretely. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that is uh, an example, of, or, or is, in, in way how you can sort of approach that 
that issue of, of land use on uh, towards economic uh, what is it viability uh... okay um i mentioned in uh in my slides that uh, we try to find areas where we can um address several uh, different topics uh, on the same spot um, and at the moment we focus on uh, rivers and riverbeds because uh, riverbeds and adjet, uh, adjet, um the areas um, near to them are perfect for uh, recreation because you often have recreational uh, use uh, and um, uh, bike trails um, you can use them for uh, climate adaptation because often these are quite important for uh, cool air ventilation of uh, of cities uh, where did those rivers go through. You can use them um, for biotop network because uh, you have strong connectivity to other um, um, nature conservation areas. So uh, and um, what comes with it. Um, these areas are often not so important for agriculture because uh, these are wet meadows uh, which uh, don't uh, you can't use them um, very very good so i think um, we have a network of rivers within the region which almost touch almost every municipality and these are our inter-municipality uh, network areas I hope you can understand it now a little bit better. The problem will be how to uh, to get these areas because uh, it's all private land uh, and it's quite hard because our farmers are already quite affected by the housing development and they're not so willing to give um, areas for a biotech network, for example. Mm. This is the key issue, okay. to be honest. Thank you for Excuse your me, good. answer. Excuse me, uh, I think that it's better to prevent than uh, compensate, isn't it? Why, why, you, why do you uh, establish this uh, compensating mechanism instead of uh, trying to develop regulation about the use of the, the rural areas? Uh, I don't think I did understand. We have both. We have. Um, land use concepts, regional planning, quite um, comparable to your system, I think. We have a very strong uh, protection of um, non-built areas. That's called our green uh, green belt system. So it's also not allowed to, uh, to build houses uh, everywhere in the landscape. But uh, the German uh, conservation law um, uh, says that if you affect uh, natural functions, you have to compensate this um, on another place. So this is a, this is a law, and uh, as I mentioned, we try to to use this law to improve landscape in general. Okay, thank you. I see yeah. this gives a lot of stuff for uh, <laughs> for further yeah. compensation, but I have to look at the clock, and there is also other. Uh, events going on uh, quite soon so maybe uh, I, I would like to ask Jacob to give some some words and uh, I will finish but we will yeah. not finish the whole discussion maybe today but not for the longer term yeah yeah uh, that's quite a difficult uh, discussion everywhere in Germany how to compensate and of course we have also some very restrictive land use uh, laws but um, as you all know it's uh, yeah sometimes you have to use at least uh, whatever a little bit of green land and then you have to compensate and it's because of the federal system um, sometimes you have to do this outside your uh, district or your even your federal state at least for the german city state that's always a big problem and you're always in discussion with your uh, with the other federal states around how to compensate and um, how to do it so it's most interesting what you're doing in stuttgart really because we all have the same problem here and i guess it's sometimes it's always a little bit the same whole over europe that gives me one thing i've i've learned three things or i've relearned three things which is always the case if i'm meeting with international uh, colleagues um if you're talking about the question of partnership of rural and urban um first thing is yes we have to talk about partnerships but we all 
we have to talk about the legitimate interests of the rural and the urban. And you have to bring this together. And I guess everything what we have heard now and the different examples, in the different governance layers, um, shows us this. On the one hand, we have to work together. On the other hand, we have to exact, exact there are differences between the uh, urban and the rural, and the, uh, these are legitimate, re legitimate interests, and the governance has to be used to moderate them. Second, um, if we are looking all over Europe, perhaps it's self-evident, but I think it's important to say it aloud. If we are thinking about good governance, we always have to keep in mind the government system because the governmental system is most important for what is happening at the place and the strategies have to be place based and something that works in Germany doesn't work in France or in uh, Pay Basque. And third, and perhaps a little bit fourth is um, what Juliet has said uh, from Chechen. Um, it is always important to emphasize on awareness. And the best thing how you raise awareness for rural urban partnerships from my point of view and what I've relearned today is um, create working projects. Do this by proving that rural urban partnerships are working. You can have the best plan or the best maps and whatever the best governance layers. Um, but when it comes to the ground and when it comes to the municipalities and to the politicians, you have to prove that rural urban partnership works in the projects and benefits all the partners. It's not necessary that it benefits all the partners on an equal level, but at least it has to be or create in the long term a win-win situation. That is what is most important from my point of view. And so this, it's these uh, three things. Um, yeah, what I think is important and I would say what is also important to bring in into the uh, European discussion. That's what I wanted to say, Hank. Thank you very much. I think that is also very to the point uh, uh, in a way that, of course, it's to the point, Jacob. I can't expect anything else from you, but I think indeed um, the, the aspect of, uh, yeah, let's say, convincing people, at least showing people uh what what benefits are and sometimes not only benefits tomorrow but maybe benefits in a much longer term and for that i i, I could also uh, i can uh, recommend uh, to follow a project an espon project which is running at the moment which is called imagine or imagine eh? i don't speak italian but it is an italian project uh which is actually about uh, uh the, the relation between milano and uh, bologna uh, looking at transportation and mobility, but also, to, let's say their objective is to, to look at how people perceive, let's say, those areas, those, uh, because some, some people think that when you live in Bologna, you live in a village, and of course, compared to Milano, that might be true, but of course, it's a big city. So it is interesting, I think, also the, the perception that people have, and that was mentioned before, I think, uh, in, in various uh, of, of your uh, talks, I think the perception of people and to understand that, that's a difficult one, but I think it's very important to to get that to people's perception in 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 in, in what is it integrated in in your your work um, and uh, you never can you can't force that people see things like they like them to see um, I think we will wrap up um, we have uh, as I mentioned uh, there will be a uh, or there is running a expert group for metrics on metropolitan landscapes uh, uh, here you see it. Um, there are already quite a number of you who are involved in this expert group. Uh, it is relatively new again because of the importance of this issue and not only because we would like to run expert groups, but it is of course uh, an important topic uh, also in the uh, largest charter as mentioned uh, several times and the territorial agenda. Um, and uh, even uh, we discuss about things like using words like urban rural, uh, 
uh, we have now called it balancing the urban and rural, it is important to uh, to further develop this discussion and also learn from each other. And as Jacob said, uh, we have various uh, and very different uh, uh, approaches, uh, different cultures, and that often have led has led to uh, different uh, regulations, uh, law systems, etc. But on the other hand, we have, uh, I think, very similar objectives, and I would be really happy to um, to uh, to, uh, to receive you there. Um, but for now, I would like to uh, to thank you all, the speakers and the listeners, uh, for joining in this in this uh, interesting uh, uh, session in the ERP20 conference. And of course, uh, I can only say on behalf of the organization to also look at uh, the other uh, agenda, which is still running uh, later on, but also tomorrow. So thank you very much, all speakers. Thank you very much, listeners. And I wish you a very uh, good uh, follow up on the conference. And I hope to see you uh, soon again. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.